Good afternoon, I'm Sri Lakshmi and I'm working at IQM as a senior quantum engineer. I'm working on developing algorithms for different applications. I would like to thank the organizers for giving me an opportunity to present our work, financial risk analysis using quantum computing today. Without further ado, let me begin by asking the question, given such a complicated network of financial institutions, can there be a drastic change in one of the components of these institutions such that the institutions survive such a drastic change? This problem is an NP hard problem due to the different unpredictable factors involved in them. We would like to study this model and improve on the existing techniques. So give me, let me give you the model of, that we would like to study. So here is a network of institutions which co-own many of the assets. These assets could be different commodities. So given the price of the assets P, we would like to understand what is the market value of the institution V. The problem is reformulated in terms of the minimization problem involving different aspects which could be the ownership of the assets, how the holdings are distributed among these institutions, and additionally, a nonlinear theta function. So if the market value falls below a particular critical value, then the price of the assets change. So in the presence of all these different terms, we would like to study the model. In the recent past, people have used the Legendre function for an expansion of the theta function. A very high degree of Legendre polynomials are required to accurately represent the step function. This would lead to, in terms of qubits, many multi-qubit interactions to be implemented. So we are going to talk about a way in which we can avoid such many multi-qubit interactions and also prescribe a way to implement the multi-qubit interaction on the chip. So with that, let me start with encoding the real values, which are the market values, in terms of a dyadic bit representation. Here we have normalized the market values to lie between zero and one. So any function of these now market values can be written in terms of the Walsh functions, which are a complete basis set. To convert to qubit interactions, the prescribed way is to find the non-zero bits of the nth order Walsh function and substitute them with the Z qubit interaction. I show here an example. So the seventh Walsh function, we would convert the number seven to binary, which would be one, one, one. And then this would correspond to a ZZZ interaction implemented by the set of C naught gates as shown on the right. So let me show you what the first eight Walsh functions looks like. And here they are. Looking at these, you can already understand that the step function can be very well represented by a few number of Walsh functions, both accurately as well as exactly. Therefore, we are now uh, having to implement very few multi-qubit interactions on the chip. With this, now we talk about how we could decompose this many body interactions into two qubit gates. To do that, we would first decompose a gate into non-commuting operators O and H, such that the commutation of O and H gives you the many body interaction to be implemented. Now, if O and H are subsequently multi-qubit interactions as well, we would decompose them further till we are left with a sequence of two qubit gates. Now, once these two qubit gates are native, they can be easily implemented on the chip. If they are not, we need to further perform single qubit rotations such that we can convert these non-native gates to native gates. As you can see, this many body decomposition has a lot of interesting features. 
And let me talk to you about some of them. One of them is as shown here. Here is an implementation of a six body polystring term. The two qubit gates between zero and one, and four and five, the ZZ interaction, come with opposite coupling strengths and therefore can be canceled. This leads to lesser number of two qubit gates to be implemented, as well as a reduction in the depth of the circuit. Apart from this, if you would like to connect two qubits, let's say zero and five, which are long range and are not directly connected on the chip, then we would find a qubit coupling path in between them and try to implement the many body interaction between these redundant qubits and the qubits that we are interested in as a many body gate, and then apply subsequent two qubit gates to remove the redundant qubits. Let me show you how the path look like. So here on the right hand side, the path D is the path for such a, a many body interaction calculation. So I'm introducing my, uh, many redundant qubits in between the qubits zero and five, such that I can connect zero and five. And now once these can be connected, I then remove redundant qubits using two qubit interactions. I can also find alternate uh, qubit coupling paths, let's say B and B prime, but keeping the motive at hand, that we should need an optimal circuit depth at all times. For the path C, there is no equivalent alternative path to be implemented. Now, armored with all these features, we try to tackle the problem that we began with using the quantum approximate optimization algorithm. This is a hybrid algorithm using both quantum and classical paths. The optimization of the parameters gamma and beta are done using uh, classical optimizers. So here we perform alternatively the cost and the mixer function. The cost function is basically what we began with, the minimization of the function of the financial institutions. The mixer operator is just a series of X gates on all the qubits. Now, such an uh, QAOA optimization leads to the following results. So on the left-hand side, I first show you without the nonlinear term for, an, for 10 institutions with 20 assets. I show how with the survival factor, the number of institutions that failed is. I'm fixing the drop factor. And as you can see, if the drop factor is really high, then the institutions fail almost always. They are not able to survive such a drastic change. In fact, only one institution at a parameter value of three could at all survive and recover. Now on the right-hand side, I show you the uh, calculation in, in, with the nonlinear term into consideration. Here we have considered three institutions and 20 assets. The total number of qubits that would be required to represent the three institutions is three into the number of qubits that I have used to represent each institution. And therefore, I, I have used here 12 qubits. This number does not depend upon the number of assets because uh, the, it, it is independent of the number of assets. We are representing the market values of the institutions as the qubits. Therefore, for realistic calculations, we can introduce as many assets are realistically feasible. So here I'm plotting the energy for different levels of QAOA for a fixed survival factor. And I show you in the inset how the energy has optimized using the classical optimizer. And what we find is that the parameter range in which the, uh, in the presence of the nonlinear term, it has to be large for the institutions to survive beyond three, in fact. This is as expected. 
So Ahmad, with this, let me now give you a summary and a conclusion for the presentation. So I have shown you that the legendary polynomial expansion leads to many multi-qubit terms. So therefore, Walsh function is a much better way to expand the theta function. I have also showed you how the parameter regime is for the institutions to survive. And what is what we would like to do with this work is to extend it to include more realistic uh, problems of failure and add more nonlinear terms. With that, I would like to thank my contributors who have also worked on this project. I would like to let you know that uh, we are always looking for people to hire. So if you're interested, we are looking for quantum algorithm expert at the Munich office. We also have offices in Espoo, Bilbao, and Paris. Please follow our uh, careers page in case you are interested. I would also like to invite you for the SQA conference that's happening in Helsinki. We can have many exciting and insightful discussions there as well. With that, I would like to thank you for your attention. And please feel free to contact me in case you have any questions with this. Thank you.